Good morning. <laughs> Thank you so much for your patience this morning. We are having some technical difficulties in the sanctuary here on site. And so we have been unable to get our screen to talk with our computers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little mix up here on site. For those of you who are joining us online, I ask for your continued patience for just a few more moments. We're gonna ask that those of you who are present here in the sanctuary move to another room so that you're able to view the entire service, including our wonderful guest speaker, Melanie Damore. So um, we have someone out here in the narthex who is gonna lead you to that room. And again, I apologize for this mix up, um, but we will get our technology worked out. This is just one of those things. So if you will kindly move to the next room. This is one of those things that, that happens as we're starting new things and bugs that we have to work out. I, I, I do apologize for this. We're glad that you're all here this morning. We're just gonna give them a few more moments to get to the room and get settled in. I appreciate everyone's flexibility and patience. And I hope wherever you are, that you are enjoying this beautiful weather that we are having here in Edmonds. I hear the din of voices starting to quiet down. I think folks in the room are settling into their chairs. I hope those of you who are joining us online are settled into where you are joining us from. We'll give it just one more moment. Excellent. Our, our wonderful, wonderful tech team is getting everything finished up here so we can get started very soon. <clears throat> Wonderful. Thank you again for all your patience. Are we ready to go?
Okay, friends, thank you. Good morning and welcome to Edmonds Unitarian Universalist Congregation. I am Reverend Crystal, and I'm happy to be serving as your worship leader this morning. Along with the Reverends Eric Kamenetsky and Cecilia Kingman, we serve as the worship leadership team of this congregation. Our guest speaker this morning is Melanie Damore. Some of you may know Melanie from her presence here last month. Singer, songwriter, composer, activist, nothing is closer to Melanie's heart than bringing people together to experience the healing power of music. Whether she's performing solo, doing residencies with choirs all over the country, or teaching sound awareness to people of all ages, one thing is certain. Her mission is to make sure you unlock the key to experiencing yourself in all your glory and return home with the very same excitement and passion for living that she herself has. Along with joining us today, Melanie will begin a regular music ministry with us here at EUC this fall. We're thrilled to have you with us this morning, Melanie. And if you're visiting with us for the first time, either on site or online, I bid you a special welcome. We're so glad you're here. Our community is enriched every time our circle of love and care expands. If you're joining online, I invite you to follow the link to our visitor form in the comments below this Facebook post and fill it out so we can send you more information about who we are and about who you can become if you choose to explore this amazing congregation. In a moment, the service will begin, and immediately after the service, we will gather on Zoom for a virtual coffee hour featuring conversation and community. If you fill out that visitor form that I just talked about, we'll send you a link that will allow you to join us for coffee hour next week after the service. We invite you and you choose. We would love to have you come back next week for Sunday service and join in coffee hour. And now we open our service with a land acknowledgement followed by a call to worship. We begin our time together as Edmonds Unitarian Universalist Congregation by recognizing the people whose lands we gather upon. Our congregational building, this place from which I am speaking, is on the ancestral lands of the Snohomish people. We give thanks for their presence among us still today. May the truth telling we practice here contribute to the struggle for liberation for all people. Our call to worship is from Margaret A. Kipp. As surely as we belong to the universe, we belong together. We join here to transcend the isolated self, to reconnect, to know ourselves to be at home here on earth, under the stars, linked with each other. Come now and let us worship together. Each week we gather, we place a flame in the bowl of the chalice. By this, we commit and complete a sign and a signal of our Unitarian Universalist faith tradition. We do so this morning with words from Eric Williams. In the beginning, there was light, infinite and expansive, flowing out from an unseen center. Throughout creation, there is light, from the steady sun, the glowing moon, the flashing meteor, the twinkling stars, and the auroras dancing in the northern skies. 
Within each part of creation, there is light. Slowed down and held close by every cell and molecule, by each atom and element. Within you, there is light. The same light as the source. The same radiance that is in all creatures. May this small flame be a constant reminder to you of your true nature and your kinship with all beings. And now, Melanie will lead us in our first song on the screen. For those of you joining us online, please feel free to sing along. And for those of you here on site, we ask that you listen to the music and let it move you. Good morning, fam. I'm so glad to see you. And I like to begin every single day with this particular chant that I wrote because sometimes it's important that we feel ourselves as being part of everything around us. Here's how it goes. Every breath, every day, every prayer, every song, I am here. Every breath, every day, every prayer, every song, I am here. Now, if you just want to get your sway on and move that body a little bit, and just understand, move right along with that energy on the planet, and know that you are part of everything that is happening. Every breath, every day, every prayer, every song, I am here. Every breath, every day, every prayer, every song, I am here. And when you say the word here, you can't help but smile. You cannot say the word, you can't go like this, it doesn't work. Every breath, every day, every prayer, every song, I am here. Every breath, every day, every prayer, every song, I am here. And I know the folks in the sanctuary are like really glad to be there. Every breath, every day, every prayer, every song, I am here. Every breath, every day, every prayer, every song, I am here. Oh, every breath, every day, every prayer, every song, I am here. Every breath, every day, every prayer, every song, we are here. We are here. Thank you, Melanie. Mm. When we join together as a congregation, we share together in words that we have crafted to name what it is that we share together as a faith community. Please join me in our congregational affirmation. We need each other. And so we come to this place to work and dance and laugh and cry and think. We call ourselves a religious community, not because this place is in itself holy ground, but because what we do here and say here and are here make it so. So let it be. And now we are gonna share in our time for all ages. I invite you to snuggle up close to those you are with 
and join in our story adapted from Reverend Erica A. Hewitt. Come one, come all, to the greatest game show in church. You all are contestants on the critically acclaimed game show, Why? Yes, Why is the exciting game show where you get to make choices that impact your future and explain the reasons for those choices. On today's episode, you have the choice between two closed doors. You only get to open one of them, but behind it is a great prize. If you choose door number one, you will receive a million dollars. That's right, one million dollars. But if you choose door number two, your 10 nearest neighbors will receive a million dollars, but not you and your family. Just to be clear, If you choose door number two, your 10 neighbors will become millionaires, but they will be legally prohibited from giving you any of their newfound wealth. Which door would you open? Door number one or door number two? Door number one will make you and only you a millionaire. Door number two will make your 10 neighbors millionaires. Now, before you choose which door to open, think about why you choose that door. That's the name of the game. Why? I'm going to ask you to explain your reason for choosing door number one and door number two. So why? This might be a little more difficult now since everybody else is in another room. <laughs> now, since we, we don't have that room full of contestants, I'm going to have to sort of punt here a little bit. But we have a host of contestants online. So we're going to decide like this. Those of you who, um, all of you who would pick door number one, that's you get a million dollars, raise your hand. And if you're online, you can type a comment on the Facebook post. So if you choose door number one, raise your hand or type a comment that says, yes, door number one, I receive a million dollars. Okay? Now, if you pick door number two, same thing. Raise your hand or comment on our Facebook post. All right. Wow. I can't see the answers here. (laughs) <laughs> but we are a congregation of Unitarian Universalists, and so at least the people that I can see in this room who are helping put the service together, there were more people who raised their hands for door number two. Let's get some reasons why from our contestants. Would someone like to share why you picked the door you did? Again, if you're with us online, type your reasons for picking door number one or door number two on the post. Would anybody in here like to share your reason for what the door you picked? Someone in here said they they picked door number two to spread the wealth to more people. Would anybody else like to share? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some answers here that I had set up just in case something like this were to happen. Someone said they picked door number one because they have a lot of debt and they have some medical procedures coming up and so they really need the money. And somebody else is saying that they picked door number two because they thought that if they helped other people with that money, that it helps the whole community and that that's one of our our ideas and our values as Unitarian Universalists is to help the whole community. Thank you for your thoughtful whys. It sounds like there are good reasons to give away millions and millions of dollars. Thank you for joining in today's game of why. And now we return to our regularly scheduled Time for All Ages story already in progress. This game show is interesting because asking why helps us hear motivations. What causes us to make certain choices? 
When we talk about the choices we make to live out our values in community, we're talking about our ethics. And actually, that ties into our third Unitarian Universalist source of wisdom, the ethical and spiritual wisdom of the world's religions. As Unitarian Universalists, we draw upon wisdom from the world's religions to help us learn how to live our lives more ethically. There are lots of sources of ethical guidance. For example, John Stuart Mill was a 19th century philosopher who used the term utilitarianism to describe choosing actions that will create the greatest happiness or greatest good for the greatest number of people. Which door do you think would create the greatest impact for the greatest number of people? That's right, door number two. Sometimes religion can give us ethical instructions, like the golden rule, which can be found in one form or another in so many of the world's religions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. What do you think the golden rule says about which door to choose? Door number two. But there are other ways to think about this decision because it's important to care for ourselves too. And sometimes caring for ourselves comes first. Maybe your neighbors would use their millions of dollars in ways that are less responsible. Maybe you and your family really need some money. Maybe you have ideas about how to use a million dollars to care for yourself and your neighbors. This is when you can turn to the teachings of the world's religions to help guide you in making your decision. You can learn about charity from Islam, kindness from the Baha'i faith, nonviolence from Hinduism, and compassion from Buddhism, just to name a few. One of the things we do in this congregation is ask questions about why we do the things we do. Our questions, our conversations, and our wonderings are usually more important than the answers. So I encourage you to keep the question why at the ready. And when you have a decision to make about what door to go through next, you can think about what you've learned about how to be a kind, loving person to help guide you in making your decision. We get to be love's operators in the world. So it's up to us to make ethical choices that put love first in all we do. Let's get to it. Thank you for joining in the Time for All Ages. We now move into a time of quiet reflection and meditation. I invite you to settle your mind and center in your heart. Ram Dass tells us, the most important aspect of love is not in giving or the receiving, it's in the being. Being in love means seeing the beloved all around me. Let us breathe in the silence, and I will bring us back out in a few seconds. May solace come upon you, power rise within you, and peace 
settle on your heart. May it be so. I dreamed of rain and the rains came Soft and easy, sweet and clear I dreamed of rain and the rains came And peace spread over the land I dreamed of summer and the rains came Green was easy and the rivers ran I dreamed of summer and the winds changed and priests spread over the land. And the flowers bloom in the desert and the air is fresh and clear. I dreamed of rain and the rains came and peace spread over I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose The way was easy, the path was clear I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose And peace spread over the land And the garden stars are shining And the night is bright and clear I dreamed of freedom and the moon and peace spread over the land. I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang. The sound was easy and the song was clear. I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang and peace spread over And the ancient pain is forgotten And the Father's debts are clear I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang And peace spread over the land I dreamed of rain and the rains came Soft and easy and sweet and clear Dreamed of rain and the rains came and peace spread over the land. Peace spread over the land. Peace spread over the land. Good day, fam. I chose that song written by uh, John Garrett and J.D. Martin because just the idea of loving the planet, of understanding how close connected we are to all of that. And especially these days, we're going with dealing with some serious climate crises and our disconnection from each other and from the planet. But what I want to talk about today is reconnecting with that, with mama all around you. You know, I had an experience, um, I used to live in Taos, New Mexico. And right now Taos and, and that area is dealing with lots of danger of fire. But one of the miraculous things about being there and being aware of being surrounded and wrapped up in the arms of the mother and the mountain, and you live in a place that is beautiful. It's beautiful. And sometimes in this crazy world that we're living in, because, you know, Mercury is in retrograde, everything is in retrograde, and things are turned upside down. But when we stop and be a little bit stiller, when we actually breathe instead of holding our breath, it is amazing how much of mama is all around us. And so I don't want so much to talk about what is in danger, but what is here. And the danger is not noticing what is here. And um, 
when I first when I first knew, moved to New Mexico, I, and I was living up there in northern New Mexico in the mountains, and I was walking along the mesa, and all of a sudden I heard this sound, and I thought, what? What is that? And you know, I was born in the South Bronx, you know, in New York City, ain't, you know, ain't, it's a different thing. But I heard this sound and I looked up and I realized that it was the sound of a hawk's wings moving through the air. Now, you know, you don't hear those kind of things really in the South Bronx, you just, you just don't, don't hear that on the subway. And I was just completely overwhelmed with just the magic of it all, the connection and the fact that for some reason I was quiet enough within myself to hear that movement of wings. And I was uh, doing a session uh, on, online with one of my mentees the other day. Bless her heart, baby girl is going through a really, really hard time. And, and just the noise in her head, and I was listening to her, and there was all this bird song coming from her side of the thing. I said, do you hear that? And she said, hear what? I said, you got so much bird song all around you that when you're feeling like all jammed up and jelly tight, just go ahead and listen to that music. That's the, that is Mama Earth letting you know that no matter what, she is here. And when we make those, those kind of connections and understand that it seems like no matter what we do, Mama Earth is there. And then maybe we, when we realize that, then we want to nurture that. And I, uh, while I was in New Mexico not very long ago, I, I, I wrote a, a, it's kind of like a walking meditation chant, and we can do this together. I was on, I was on the mesa above the, the Rio Grande Gorge, and I mean, it's just ridiculously beautiful. You look at it and you go, really? That is just incredible. And then to realize that we are part of that, that our cells are connected to all of that. That, that the Rio Grande Gorge lives in us. That that tree in your yard lives in us. All of that is us. And I think if we remember that and give thanks and praise for that, it helps. So here's how it goes. And we have a gesture and it's very simple. And it's not this, I'm not pointing at the thing, I'm doing this because it's a matter of acknowledging and then bringing that back to you. So it goes like this. Thank you for this and that. So now you can actually do that. So don't leave a sister hanging. You know what, they, I, I can see you folks there in the sanctuary. Just get, help, help me out here, okay? Thank you for this and that. Thank you for this and that. Thank you for this and that. Thank you. So you are looking at the, and there's space so that you actually are looking at that beautiful thing or that beautiful person. You're giving them a moment. You're bringing that appreciation back into you. It's not like this, like, oh yeah, I like that. That's different than this and bringing it back in. And you know how, you know how little kids are when they see something that just, just thrills them? They're like, oh, and look at that. Oh, and look at this. Oh, my gosh. That's what this, this whole thing is about, of acknowledging all of that stuff that's around you and all of the things that bring you little bits of grace and little bits of joy. So we can do this together. Thank you for this and that. Thank you for this and that. Thank you for this and that. Thank you. Thank you for this. Thanks, Reverend Crystal, and that. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. This and that. How about Laura? Thank you for this and that. Thank you. Thank you for this and that. Thank you for this and that. Thank you for this and that. Thank you. Just the act of walking just where you are in your neighborhood, around you, and noticing those things that we don't notice very much. You know, I, I, outside of my window, I have birds going on. I get cars zipping by. I have trees outside my window. 
I have little kids running around making lots of noise, dogs barking and all of that. And sometimes I can just zero in on the birds. And just, we're, we're funny about that because we think, no, those sounds aren't around us, but they're there, you just have to listen to them. And I know that I think about the planet and sometimes when I used to live in New Mexico, I would just go and lay down on the ground. Just lay down. And I would just let myself be held that way. Go off into the, into the to woods. And you know, I'm, where I live now is redwood trees. Now you know redwood trees. Look at you doing this song, I love it. Oh, oh that's great. Um, it must be a delay or something. Anyway, um, when I lived in, in New Mexico and I would just, I was so overwhelmed by the, by the, the earth and the nature around me. And how many of you remember the uh, harmonic convergence? You remember that years ago, back in the 80s, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, Taos is one of those places, one of the places of power, you know, there's Machu Picchu and all of that. And I had one of those kind, you know, you have a waking revelation now, I don't do any mind-altering anything, so this is just sometimes earth energy and mama energy and spirit just, they just say, baby, I'm about to take you on a little trip. And so I'm, I'm there at Spiral Lake. You know, they have places like this in Taos all over the place. And if you're standing up on a hill and it's an arroyo that is an absolute perfect spiral. So we were all there to crack a dawn because that's how you do things like that. Crystal, crystal, it's that kind of blue that makes your eyes just almost hurt. It is so beautiful, you know, that blue, blue, blue. And so um, I'm there with all these other folks. We're there and as the sun's coming up, crystal blue, crispy, crispy, crispy outside, absolutely ridiculously gorgeous. And I'm there and all of a sudden, there's all these people around me, and all of a sudden, this beautiful dark darkness comes. And I, I, my eyes are open, and I'm thinking to myself, anybody else seeing this? And in this waking thing, it was this beautiful, like, ebony-colored sky with all of these, like, golden threads going all the way through, every, and millions of people, and this, like, a grid going all the way through the hearts of all, as far as I could see. And it was like these shimmering lights running on all these, this grid that went through all the heart spaces. Now, I really saw this, and I'm not a person who does hallucinogens, okay? I really saw this. And there were places in the grid where it was a little frayed, and, and a little frayed, and a, you could tell it was a little bit less golden. But other places were sending that energy throughout the web. And in no place were those, was, the, was the web broken. And I realized to myself, oh, we are all part of that web despite ourselves. And that the earth and spirit and all of that is allowing us to keep connected no matter what we do to try and disconnect ourselves. And I saw that and then after a while, which seemed like a while, which probably could have been a couple of seconds because you know, spirit's time is a different thing. And then there was that blue sky again. And ever since then, if I get really still and get my own self out the way and, and you know flush out some of the noise when I'm hearing just that bird song, I see and experience that web that goes through all of us. And it is there. And it was one of the most amazing things. I, I, and it's funny, when, when it came back to the present, of course, who knows, I kind of looked around like wondering if anybody else saw that. But I know that is true. And I know that here I am in Oakland, and you're there, happy some of y'all to be in the sanctuary, but that web and the web of the mother and the planet runs through all of us. And it behooves us to thank, bring it in. Because once you notice something beautiful like that, you are more inclined to want to do anything you can to preserve that. 
you know, I, when I first heard those hawks wings through the air, I, you know, I wanted to go get my cousins in New York and say, wait, wait, you, you got to come, you got to listen to this to preserve those places. You know, um, when we, when I, I was, grew up in New York and my father joined the military to get us out and they sent us from the South Bronx to Anchorage, Alaska in January. I thought they had taken us to the moon. I thought, I, I was like, where are we? You know, take us to the moon. And also because it was January, the sun went down at like one o'clock in the afternoon. So it was just like a weird science fiction movie. And we were accustomed to skyscrapers, but there the skyscrapers were the mountains. They were the mountains. And, and I remember my mom telling us to go outside and play. And when we lived in New York, my mother never told us that because it was really dangerous in our neighborhood. And I remember sitting on the porch with my brother Kenny and Kenny said to me, he said, Mel, what do you think mama means by go outside and play? And my mom heard that and she said, that means you can just, it is safe to go outside and roll around in the snow and do whatever you wanna do. But we had, did not have a concept of that. And so that's when I began to learn that great connection between just being able to be in the arms of the mother. And I love that. And we're always in the arms of the mother. Always. Let the mother hold you, hold you all your days. Let her hold you close in her special way. Let her take your hand and ease you on your way. Let the mother hold you hold you all your days. And so before you, when just when you wake up, before you even open your eyes, what are those extraordinary sounds around you? Even in the, the hardest of times, there is always bird song somewhere, always, always, always. There is always that sound. And it's a peaceful thing. And if you hear that sound, you're always going to want to hear it. So we will do things to help that survive. Everybody should have a chance on the planet to hear that, that bird song, bird's wings, to hear the sound. Of, first time I heard aspen leaves whispering in the wind, I thought, okay, that's a beautiful thing. In the cool of the morning sunlight, when the mountain calls my name, I can tell by the song of the whispering trees, I will never be the same. In the cool of the morning sunlight, when the mountain calls my name, I can tell by the song of the whispering trees, I will never be the same, never be the same. Bless your bones, everybody. And the people said, Amen. If you are new to our gathering, it is important for you to know that our EUC's weekly offering goes right out into the world 
to support organizations doing good works that align with and extend the mission of this congregation, gathering together, nurturing the spirit, living our vision of a just and sustainable world. The Reclaim Our Vote campaign is our Sunday offering for May. The Reclaim Our Vote campaigns are a project of the Center for Common Ground, CFCG. CFCG is a people of color funded and led nonprofit and nonpartisan organization. It seeks to create a more just and inclusive democracy by protecting the right to vote, countering voter suppression, and democracy by protecting the oh, and promoting active voting, excuse me. It works in nine states, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, Texas, and Arizona. Campaigns include postcards, phone banking, and an establishment of community-based grassroots-led democracy centers. If you're online, you will find the link in our comments for making your donation, or you can go to our website at euuc.org to donate. If you're on site, there are baskets out in the narthex right outside the doors of the sanctuary. Please be generous within the limits of your budget. Thank you. And we have one announcement this morning. Our annual meeting for the EUC members is being held today at 2 p.m. on Zoom. EUC members will vote on important matters of our community and our denomination. The Zoom link will be sent out to EUC members today. See you all at 2 o'clock. And now, we extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth. We extinguish this flame, but not the warmth of this community. We extinguish this flame, but not the fire of our commitment. These we will carry with us until we meet again. Go in peace, my friends. Lead with love. And now Melanie will take us out with music. Let's lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Don't give up hope. You're not alone. You're not alone. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. Keep moving on. Keep moving on. So we got to put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. We got to put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. I know you're scared and I'm scared too. Well, but here I am mm, 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 right next to you, right next to you. So we gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. We gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. And lead with love. And lead with love. And lead.